Hey guys, Ben here. Today I have a very special unboxing. This one is coming all the way from Hungary and it is an extremely rare puzzle that uh, probably hasn't really been seen by a lot of people and it's very exciting. And I'm just super excited about this so let's just go ahead and open this up already. Okay, so the reason I'm so excited about this is that it's the very first mass-produced Mega Mix. Sorry for the background noise. All right, so the very first mass-produced Mega Mix is the Hungarian Supernova. Oh yes, I have been waiting for this. Let's go ahead and open this up. And here is the puzzle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, let's zoom in. All right, so here's the puzzle close up. As you can see, it looks just like an ordinary Megamix, right? And it turns like an ordinary Megamix. It's pretty stiff, but I think I can work with it. Oh wow, it's stiff. Oh man, I'm gonna have to lubricate this. I'll do that in a minute. Um, it's a bit dusty, that's okay. The stickers are kind of warm, but the fact that this is from like the late 1980s um, and it survived through all this time and just really unique. Yeah, this is the very first mass produced Mega Minx, and uh, ever since I've saw it, I really wanted it, uh, especially because the cuts are deeper than a normal Mega Minx, and so I'd expect to have a lot more enjoyment of solving it but it is very stiff like this you have no idea how stiff this is think of a, a Rubik's brand cube out of the box this is actually worse oh my god this thing is just killing me Ugh. <laughs> I can barely turn it but I'll, I'll put some lubricant in it later um, and, and it'll hopefully improve it oh man this thing is just ridiculously stiff At least it's not as bad as a China Minx, which I think those aren't available anymore. But yeah, this is just a very, very rare puzzle, so just wanted to have it for my collection. We do not any return, you can see in there. It's a bit dusty. I'll have, I'm going to have to take this thing apart and work with it a little because it is really stiff oh my goodness so yeah this puzzle's really interesting me so far uh, I can't wait to get this working really well and to scramble it up and solve it I'm, I'm probably gonna like solving Mega Mix more now because this has deeper cuts and I find that deeper cut puzzles are just easier for the fingers to grip and turn so I'm just really excited about this puzzle it's very cool, and also the fact that it's just extremely rare is very neat as well. Now, I'm gonna, not going to be able to help you guys get any of these because I got this from an eBay auction, and it's probably going to be one of the last ones up on eBay. So unfortunately, I can't really give you any or uh, tell you how to get one because you really can't, unfortunately. Um, but that's the truth. All right, so I'm going to go around and play with this and lubricate it, tension it, and such. Um, I probably shouldn't because it's so rare, but I'm just going to do it anyway. And then um, I'll just try to do a few solves, and then I'll come back and give you my full review on the puzzle. Alright guys, I'm back. Now I've actually had this puzzle for several months now, I know, um, and just for several reasons I was never able to get around to finishing up this video. But now I've finally had the chance, so now I'm going to talk some more about this puzzle. So the Hungarian Supernova is actually the very first mass-produced Megamix. Uh, it actually came out even before the Mefferts Mega Minx, around the early 1980s, around 1982, 1983, sometime around there. And uh, so it's actually uh, quite an old vintage puzzle, and it's uh, pretty neat. Now, I learned that there were two production runs of this puzzle. Um, the first one was around the early 1980s, and one was much later. Uh, I don't remember the exact date, but I believe it was in uh, early 2000s, something like that. Um, but by judging by the stickers and by the mechanism of this particular one I have, uh, I can assume that this is part of the original production run. So this puzzle is actually quite rare and I was quite lucky to get a hold of it. 
Now, I'm going to be comparing this puzzle with a standard Mega Minx. This is a, an MF8 Mega Minx. And I'm going to compare the two puzzles and point out several differences. Uh, one of the first differences you can see is that the cut depth on the Hungarian Supernova is a little bit deeper. As you can see, the cut depth meets at the midpoint of the edge on the dodecahedron, whereas on the Mega Minx, on the regular MF8 Mega Minx, it doesn't quite reach the midpoint. And so the layers are actually a lot deeper, and so it's easier for my fingers to grip the layers to uh, turn it. So it's actually a little bit nicer to use. The second difference is the color scheme. And as you can see, the color scheme on this puzzle is quite unusual, you know. Um, it, but what I realized is that this puzzle, uh, the way the color scheme works is it's cool colors opposite warm colors. And I thought that was uh, pretty interesting to see. You know, you can see on this one it's not that special. But uh, because of the way the color scheme is arranged on the Hungarian Supernova, it's actually very nice to look at because, like I said, cool opposite warm. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And the third difference is the size. I don't know if you can see this or not, but the Hungarian Supernova is a tad smaller than a standard MF8 Mega Minx. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it's a little bit smaller, the edge length. So as you can see, it's just a little bit smaller than that. Um, it's probably about a millimeter or so, but uh, it's actually quite nice size. Uh, I find a better size than this MF8 Mega Minx. It's actually very nice to hold in my hand. Now, in the beginning of this video, when I first got this puzzle, you saw that it was very stiff and it was really hard to move and it was just terrible. Um, but what I actually did is I cleaned out this puzzle and worked on it a little bit, and now it turns much better. Uh, it just improved so much um, over what it was before. You can actually finger trick it. And it's just so much better. It just, I'm super pleased uh, with how much better the puzzle got because I really never would have expected it to get to be this good at turning. Uh, even the corner cutting, you can really see, it just corner cuts amazingly well considering it's one of the, it's the first mass produced Mega Mix. Corner cuts very well. In fact, actually does it better than the MF8, as you can see. So uh, yeah, this one just, oh, it's so much better. And it just turns so well. Uh, I use it actually much more than my MF8 Mega Mix just because I really like how the turning of this puzzle is. It's just so much better. Now, what I've actually had to do to get it to turn this well is when I first opened up the puzzle and took the pieces out, there was a lot of dust and dirt and powder and grease and grime and so much stuff in there that, that just collected over the years. And so what I had to do is basically disassemble the whole puzzle and then I wiped the pieces down and then uh, cleaned the inside of them out with some water, uh, not on the outside because I wanted to protect the stickers. And uh, then what I actually had to do is I took an X-Acto knife and pried off the caps because they're actually hidden underneath the stickers and I was actually able to adjust the tensions of this puzzle uh, with a flathead screwdriver because uh, the screws were actually flathead. I thought that was a little interesting for a, a mass-produced puzzle to have flathead screws in it. So uh, if anyone knows why they used them, if it was just because they didn't have Phillips head at that time, uh, please let me know because I'd be really interested to find out. So uh, once I tensioned it and I cleaned all the pieces off, I then reassembled the puzzle and uh, then what I did was I took some really good lubricant like a a silicone lubricant, not like WD-40, but like Lubix, uh, lubricant like that, and I put some inside, and then it kind of worked it around, and obviously it's just gotten so much better. And I'm just really amazed at how well it turned out that something that could start by turning so terribly just got so much better. I mean, really, when I first got the puzzle and was turning it, it felt like there was sand intentionally put in it. It was just so bad, but now it's just so much better and I'm extremely pleased with the results of the turning. Now, the mechanism of the Hungarian Supernova is actually very interesting. I'll pull out some pieces for you. Take a look at some of these. This is a corner piece, and as you can see, it has a really interesting shape to it. Um, it's quite different from, like, the uh, MF8 corner piece. Uh, you can clearly see it's, like, larger, thicker. Um, it's kind of more rounded off. So that's actually a really interesting uh, mechanism. I've never really seen a Mega Minx corner that looked quite like that. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Here's an edge piece. Well, it's actually similar to a lot of Mega Minxes that I've seen. I'm pretty sure it's uh, the same as the Mefferts Mega Minx, actually. Uh, you can kind of see there's these very unusual hooks on the bottom. And you can kind of see still there's a little bit of dust on it that wasn't able to come off. But I got it, most of it really good. Um, 
So that's also very interesting. And on the inside, you can clearly see that the core is a 1980s style core because it's uh, one of the old style of uh, plastic that they used, I believe. You can clearly see how it's definitely a vintage style uh, puzzle. So the mechanism is quite interesting. But obviously, you know, as you could tell earlier, it just it works very, very well. Now, the actual quality of the stickers on this puzzle is uh, pretty good. As you can see, most of them look very nice on most of the faces. Uh, some faces look better than others. Uh, you can see this one, the sticker kind of tore a bit. And on this one, this is actually my fault. I was trying to get at the center cap, and I kind of peeled that a little bit back. But that's okay. I'm not a super hardcore collector, so it's okay if it has some minor uh, damages to it. Again, some stickers are peeling a little bit. But the actual quality of the stickers is uh, pretty nice. Uh, you know, I really like them. Although, there is something I kind of don't like about the stickers, and that's the color scheme that's used. Although I said earlier that I like the look of cool colors opposite warm colors, there's a problem, and that's because if we look at the color scheme, we have white opposite the dark blue for cool opposite warm. Around the white, we have gray, red, orange, gold, because it actually kind of looks like glitter, it's kind of reflective, and yellow. And around the dark blue face, we have silver because it's reflective and it kind of looks like glitter. Dark green, black, I don't know why they used black, probably because they ran out of colors to use. <laughs> uh, lighter green, and brown. But the thing that really bugs me is this gray and silver. What were they thinking? I mean, if you think about it, if you're trying to solve this puzzle and you're, using on, and you're solving it on the red side, the silver and the gray are next to the red face. So you might confuse this red-gray edge for the red silver edge and vice versa. So you might actually permute them incorrectly when you're solving it. And that gets very, very annoying. And it often happens actually when I'm solving this puzzle. I'll mix up the uh, colors of these pieces. And it's just really annoying. Also look, you know, that's red, brown, and silver, and red, brown, and gray. So I really don't know why they use this color scheme. Uh, I just really don't like that for solving it. Again, on the brown face, you've got your gray and silver, and you can mix these pieces up. So that is one uh, minor complaint I have about these stickers and the color scheme. It's just that they put gray and silver close to each other, so it's very confusing when you're solving it because you can mix up some of the pieces uh, when you're trying to solve the puzzle. Now, this puzzle solves just like an ordinary Mega Mix, uh, like this one, your Man and Fate. But, you know, the thing is about this puzzle, again, the annoying thing is that the color scheme is weird, so it's kind of challenging to figure out if it's a gray or silver. <laughs> So you have to be very careful when you're solving it to watch for that. But, you know, like I said, it's just like an ordinary Mega Minx, it's just that the color scheme is a little bit different and a little bit awkward. But, uh, you know, you can still use the same algorithms for it um, and still solve it just like a normal Mega Minx. All in all, I think this is actually a pretty cool puzzle. Um, you know, considering it's a vintage puzzle, that it's uh, very rare, it's one of the first production runs, I'm actually pretty lucky to actually have this on me. Uh, you know, because that eBay auction, apparently, I only bought this for around $23, so that was really exciting. Um, but, you know, I really like this puzzle. I think it's pretty cool. The reason I like it is because the cut depth is a little deeper than on a regular Mega Minx, and so it's easier for my fingers to grip the layers. And I actually solve this puzzle more than a regular Mega Minx. So I really like it. Uh, if you have a chance to get one of these, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's a really cool collector's piece for anyone who's built, wanting to build their collection. It's uh, great for the collection, and it's a really nice puzzle. I really like it. Um, and yeah, so that's about it for the Hungarian Supernova uh, unboxing and review. Hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.